know uh, why they are using the Sedition Act and how they have used it in the last few months. If you recall, the Anwar decision took place uh, on the 10th of February. Since then, we have had more than 150 cases either investigated, charged, perhaps not so many, um, but uh, that, that, is, that was a continuing exercise and clearly there was an aim to shut people up from discussing the judgment or commenting on it. Now, one of the things that concerned us very much is actually the manner in which they imposed the Sedition Act. They would first start with an arrest in most cases. I see Eric here. Eric has been the subject matter of that, Eric Paulson. Uh, in fact, you were in Bukit Aman this afternoon with Eric Paulson. Was that Sedition Noah? Uh, no, okay. Um, so, and I, and I recall actually uh, when Eric was arrested, I think 10, 10 to 20 policemen when crowded around him, and I don't know what, why they were so scared of him, look at him, they are to be afraid of, <laughs> crowded around him and arrested him, so there is one act of intimidation. If you remember Khalid Sama, I think another big group who went to his house, woke him up in the middle of the morning, all right, arrested him and took him uh, to the police station. Um, uh, the, uh, also the main first arrest, I was one of those where we were taken to the police station. I, I was asked to go to the police station at night. Uh, and they said, come and we want to take a statement. But what they then do is they hold you overnight. And that's the punishment, actually. That's the punishment for what you've done, I can tell you that. So they hold you overnight, then the next day they apply for a remand order. And I think a remand order was given for Eric for three days, two days or three days. Uh, for what, I don't know. Because when it's sedition, it's very clear what the offence is. It's very clear what the words are. So, for me actually, um, what they're doing is they're abusing the Sedition Act and they're abusing the remand process. Because they meet out the punishment effectively uh, even before you are charged. And you may never be charged, but they would have got their uh, pound of flesh, as it were. And I can tell you when they did the remand for my group of people, uh, it was after the May 1st rally. And the case of the uh, investigating officer for the remand was that we had uttered such terrible words like Hido Raya uh, and other equally terrible words like uh, discuss, uh, discussing the wealth of the Prime Minister and his wife. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et All these really dangerous things we were saying. So they had to have us in prison for four days. Okay. So that's that's the kind of thing that's going on. It's not just the Sedition Act. It's the way in which it's used. It's the entire criminal justice system process. Now the Sedition Act now uh, provides for a minimum three-year sentence if you're found guilty on a very vague vaguely defined offence. If you look at the Sedition Act, it's not very clear. The other thing is, intention is irrelevant. You didn't mean to cause a problem, alright, or to create disaffection or whatever those words are, but you did. Uh, and it results in that. Well, if it does result in that, then you can be charged, even though that was never your intention. Um, if it is a case of aggravated sedition, um, in other words, what you say results in bodily harm or damage, if the term of sentencing could go up to 20 days, but still a minimum of three years, just for things you're saying, okay? So you can see how ridiculous it has become. It's actually a, a Mickey Mouse piece of legislation, it, but it's not funny. It's not a cartoon. It's very real, okay? It is really ill thought of, and it is an absolute infringement, in my view, of fundamental rights of Malaysian people to comment. Now, um, I think Shah has already covered the social media angle, which people don't realise huh, the dangers of that, actually. And it hasn't really been enforced yet, but we'll have to wait and see how they do that. Now, always, when they bring in legislation like Sedition Act and the uh, uh, POTA, Prevention of Terrorism Act, they say, oh, if we don't bring it, there'll be chaos in the country. Okay? Now, that's the reason for the Sedition Act. I can tell you, people have said worse things than those who were arrested for sedition, 
and nothing has happened. Because Malaysian people are far more sensible and they're pretty immune to the rubbish that we are dished out, that is dished out to us every day, simply because there's so much rubbish every day. So even when someone says we're going to tear down the cross, what did anything happen? No. So th this, is, this is the thing. But that is the argument they will use every time. And that's, I remember asking the minister, Paul Lau, this question. And he said, no, but it's about security of the nation. And that's the reason they use for Porta, prevention of terrorism and ah, ISIS, very dangerous. And just before the act is passed, you will find a few arrests and suddenly there are people who, you know, uh, who are terrorists and so on. I, I'm not underscoring the, 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 the dangers of, of terrorism in this country, don't get me wrong. But my argument is there's really no need for Porta because the penal code contains enough provisions. And many of the arrests, were, uh, uh, take, uh, took place before the passing of Porta. So in fact, they were arresting people even before Porta was passed. It's just that Porta gives them much more, many more, uh, more powers. And they can, they can uh, do this preventative detection thing and throw the key away, literally. Uh, the other problem is that there's no judicial oversight where Porta is concerned. Uh, and, and if you look, compare our legislation with the countries that have serious terrorism threats, okay? Uh, you're talking about the United States, the UK, Australia, etc., etc., far more serious than us. They have oversight mechanisms. So in other words, we have tougher laws than countries that are far more in danger of terrorism. So I, so it, it shows you that, um, you know, we, we, we I, I don't know, we're paranoid. We perhaps are paranoid. And, and there's all, there are also provisions in this quota, the provision in the penal code, uh, similarly with sedition. There are provisions in, in the penal code that could possibly cover the sedition act, so sedition act is unnecessary. So I think uh, Gudia uh, Singh Nija, uh, I don't know if any of you are his students, but he wrote a wonderful article about why we should in principle repeal the sedition act, apart from some of the point, points that I made. He reminds us that the Sedition Act was enacted by the British, by the British, huh? primarily to subjugate any challenge to British rule. So freedom fighters and nationalists, Malaysians, uh, uh, at that time in Malaya, in all its colonies were charged by the colonial authorities under identical sedition laws. For example, he points out, in India, Gandhi was imprisoned in 1922 for six years for creating disaffection. Um, and Gandhi described the law as pernicious, meant to subdue nationalist leaders, and asked that he be convicted. You all remember that, that he asked for that. Near a home, of course, there, uh, under the Singapore law, Malaysian nationalists like Samad Ismail and Ahmad Mustaman were charged, also very much for the same reason. So you have people, so he asks the question, now, why do we want to continue with this act of bondage of our population? So what is, what is really strange is that we are using a law to subjugate our people, uh, which was used by the British to subjugate us as well. So it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. But nevertheless, there is a challenge to the Sedition Act, and we're hoping that that will be successful. Now, I want to end with what I, my initial comments by saying that when the uh, uh, ISA was passed, the uh, uh, Tunab and Raza, uh, had said actually the main aim was to fight communism. It was not uh, to be used as a tool for any other purpose. That was made very, very clear. Yet, it has been used over the years against opposition, against those who speak up against the government, etc., etc. Now, and at that time, this is what uh, Tupu Abdul Rahman said about the ISA. He said the ISA introduced in 1960 was designed and meant to be used solely against the communists. My cabinet colleagues and I gave a solemn promise to parliament and the nation that the immense powers given to the government under the ISA would never be used to stifle legitimate opposition and silence lawful dissent. Tupu Abdul Rahman said that about the ISA. Then Chun Musenon said about the ISA. The ISA is a measure aimed at preventing the resurgence of the earlier communist threat to
to the nation. During my term of office as Prime Minister, I made every effort to ensure the pledges of my predecessors, that powers under the ISA would not be misused to curb lawful political opposition and democratic citizen activity were respected. Then when Pota came, Zaid Hamidia, who minister, promised only acts of terrorism come under the act. Conflicting political views are not covered by the law. So that was Pota, and of course we had a promise by Ahmad Zahidi that Putrajaya won't abuse new anti-terror law. Do you feel better? No. With that assurance? Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I certainly don't sleep better with that kind of assurance because I don't believe them. Um, it's, it's been used as a tool despite all the promises and I, I believe these two pieces of legislation coming both one after the other shows that this government doesn't belong or doesn't believe in true democracy. They are out to silence the people, and I believe, I agree with uh, Shah, we should, we should resist the temptation to self-censor. I know that a lot of people, even when they give speeches, they say, ah, I, I hope this is not seditious. I'm sure you hear that very, very often now. And I think we need to stop that. We need to assert our positions, and we'll have to fight it, if at all anybody thinks uh, you're seditious. I mean, goodness me, if you retweet something, how many thousand people can they put in jail? Okay? So I think really this is something that we must resist and it's something we must not stop talking about. So I'm very pleased that you're holding this because I think people have forgotten about quota and terrorism because we have crisis every day in this country. That's the problem. So you forget very easily what, what happened, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, last month, last parliamentary sitting. Uh, so with that, uh, I end my preliminary remarks. Thank you.